hello upper school, hi primary six, six, seven and seven. Um, it's Miss Webster here and I've got your guided reading for this week. Now I've chosen this book here, it's Holes by Louis Sacker, which was one of my favourite books growing up and I've decided to read with you chapter three. Now before we start, the photos that you've got to follow along with me are from this copy of the book which I've had since I was about 12. And when I was in high school, I did a character study on, on Stanley. And so your copy has got lines um, underlining some of the text. Please ignore that. That's got nothing to do with your um, questions. It was more for me when I was 15 and wanted to pass my exams. So please ignore that, okay? Right, here we go. Chapter three. Stanley Yelnats was the only passenger on the bus, not counting the driver or the guard. The guard sat next to the driver with his seat turned around facing Stanley. A rifle lay across his lap. Stanley was sitting about ten rows back, handcuffed to his armrest. His backpack lay on the seat next to him. It contained his toothbrush, toothpaste and a box of stationery that his mother had given him. He promised to write to her at least once a week. He looked out of the window, although there wasn't much to see, mostly fields of hay and cotton. He was on a long bus ride to nowhere. The bus wasn't air conditioned and the hot, heavy air was almost as stifling as the handcuffs. Stanley and his parents had tried to pretend that he was just going away to camp for a while, like rich kids too. When Stanley was younger, he used to play with stuffed animals and pretend that the animals were at camp. Camp fun and games, he called it. Sometimes he'd have them play soccer with a marble. Other times they'd run an obstacle course or go bungee jumping off a table tied to broken rubber bands. Now Stanley tried to pretend he was going to camp fun and games. Maybe he'd make some friends, he thought. At least he would get to swim in the lake. He didn't have any friends at home. He was overweight and the kids at his middle school often teased him about his size. Even his teachers sometimes made cruel comments without realising it. On his last day of school, his maths teacher, Mrs Bell, taught ratios. As an example, she chose the heaviest kid in the class and the lightest kid in the class and they had to weigh themselves. Stanley weighed three times as much as the other boy. Mrs Bell wrote the ratio on the board three to one, unaware of how much embarrassment she had caused the both of them. Stanley was arrested later that day. He looked at the guard who sat slumped in his seat and wondered if he had fallen asleep. The guard was wearing sunglasses so Stanley couldn't see his eyes. Stanley was not a bad kid. He was innocent of the crime for which he was convicted. He'd just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was all because of his no good, dirty, rotten, peg stealing great great grandfather. He smiled. It was a family joke. Whenever anything went wrong, they always blamed Stanley's no good, dirty, rotten, peg stealing great great grandfather. Supposedly, he had a great great grandfather who had stolen a peg from a one legged gypsy and she put a curse on him and all of his descendants. Stanley and his parents didn't believe in curses, of course, but whenever anything went wrong, it felt good to be able to blame someone else. Things went wrong a lot. They always seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He looked out of the window at the vast emptiness. He watched the rise and fall of a telephone wire. In his mind, he could hear his father's gruff voice softly singing to him. If only, if only the woodpecker's sighs, the bark on the trees was just a little bit softer. While the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, he cries to the moon, if only, if only. It was a song his father used to sing to him. The melody was sweet and sad, but Stanley's favourite part was when his father would howl the word moon. The bus hit a small bump and the guard sat up, instantly alert. Stanley's father was an inventor. To be a successful inventor, you need three things. Intelligence, perseverance and a little bit of luck. Stanley's father was smart and had a lot of perseverance. Once he started a project and he would work on it for years, often going days without sleep. He just never had any luck. Every time an experiment failed, Stanley could hear him cursing his dirty, rotten, peg-stealing great-great-grandfather. Stanley's father was also named Stanley Yelnats. Stanley's father's full name was Stanley Yelnats III. Our Stanley is Stanley Yelnats IV. Everyone in his family had always liked the fact that Stanley Yelnats was spelt the same frontward and backward. So they kept naming their son Stanley. Stanley was an only child, as was every other Stanley Yelnats before him. All of them had something else in common. Despite their awful luck, they always remained hopeful. A 
Stanley's father liked to say, I learn from failure. But perhaps that was part of the curse as well. If Stanley and his father were always hopeful, then it wouldn't hurt so much every time their hopes were crushed. Not every Stanley Yelnats has been a failure, Stanley's mother often pointed out, whenever Stanley or his father became so discouraged that they actually started to believe in the curse. The first Stanley Yelnats, Stanley's great-grandfather, had made a fortune in the stock market. He couldn't have been too unlucky. At such times, she neglected to mention the bad luck that befell the first Stanley Yelnats. He lost his entire fortune when he was moving from New York to California. His stagecoach was robbed by the outlaw kissing Kate Barlow. If it weren't for that, Stanley's family would now be living in a mansion on a beach in California. Instead, they were crammed in a tiny apartment that smelled of burning rubber and foot odour. If only, if only. The apartment smelled the way it did because Stanley's father was in trying to find a way to recycle old sneakers. The first person who finds a use for old sneakers, he said, will be a very rich man. It was his latest project that led to Stanley's arrest. The bus ride became increasingly bumpy because the road was no longer paved. Actually, Stanley had been impressed when he first found out that his great-grandfather was robbed by kissing Kate Barlow. True, he would have preferred living on the beach in California, but it was still kind of cool to have someone in your family robbed by a famous outlaw. Kate Barlow didn't actually kiss Stanley's great-grandfather. That would have been really cool, but she only kissed the men that she killed. Instead, she robbed him and left him stranded in the middle of the desert. He was lucky to have survived, Stanley's mother was very quick to point out. The bus was slowing down. The guard grunted as he stretched his arms. Welcome to Camp Green Lake, said the driver. Stanley looked out of the dirty window. He couldn't see a lake and hardly anything was green. And that's chapter four. So, your questions. Question number one. Why do you think that Stanley was only allowed to bring those three small items with him in his backpack? Number two, what was Stanley made fun of for being like as a child? Number three, this is about punctuation. So why is there a dash between each word of no good, dirty, rotten, pig stealing, great, great grandfather? So you'll see if you look at the text, there's a little dash between each word. Why is that? Number four, what does the word descendants mean? Now, if you're not sure, you can have a look at the words around the text, the sentence before, the sentence after. That should help you. Number five, why does the font style change in the middle of page eight? You'll see there's a little paragraph on its own that's in italics um, and it's in a slightly different font. So why has the writer done that? It's question five. Okay? Question six. What three things do you need to be a successful inventor, according to Stanley Yelnats III? Number seven, what is so special about the name Stanley that each generation of this family has named their son that? So there's something special in this, in this family for the name. Number eight, what is the British term for the American word sneakers? Now again, because this is a word within the text, have a look at the sentence before, perhaps the sentence after, and, and that should help you. Question nine. Why was this woman given the nickname Kissin' Kate Barlow? And number ten. Why was Stanley disappointed when he looked out of the window once the bus had reached its destination? Alright, so have fun answering these questions and having a read along. Um, and you can email your questions to either me or Miss McHugh or Miss O'Donnell. Please email just your class teacher. It makes it easier for us. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow. Right? Bye.